This is Steve with Pro Tools PC, and on this video I wanted to talk about changing tempos with the Tempo Operations window. We do have an Operations window that is just about tempo settings. So, available two ways here. We can come here under Event and have your Tempo Operations window. Or we can hit Alt and 2 on the number pad and have our Tempo Operations window pop up. And under here, we have a few different settings, so constant, linear, parabolic, S-curve, so on. Constant tempo is just like a state, so wherever you set, it's going to be that one solid straight tempo. So what I'll do in this case, I know what the tempo is, I know it was 138. There's a couple different ways you can do this. It's best, in my opinion, to go to the very beginning of the session and do it rather than picking it up right there. Especially if you're tracking, you want to have a nice clean count in on your click of the tempo going into where you're recording at. So you would want it changed all the way to the beginning rather than starting here and setting it at, in this case, I know it's 138. And so now the tempo, see it adjusted here at 138. And if I'm tracking, this is still set at 120. So my click count in would be at 120 and then start at 138 when the recording pops in. Well, obviously we wouldn't want that. That'd be a little difficult. So we would start at the very beginning. We could change the um, entire session tempo just by putting your cursor at the very start of the track. I guess I should specify after you type in the number you want, hit enter on your number pad hit apply and it'll make the change and once we do that we can see the session I have in here it doesn't line up on the grid it's not really working for this example so I'll pull out of here and I will actually start it right there and now we can see how the grid falls on with the tempo. So that's a very quick way to do that. Now if you're doing this for an entire song, you are going to have to do it from beginning to end. You can't jump around. You can't set a tempo here and then jump over here and set another tempo because when you come back and try to set the tempo in this area, the start and end times can be all messed up. Uh, when you start adjusting the tempo around. So the grid is going to change. So if we come here, let me put a marker here, and let's change the tempo right here. That the start time from the one, the, the previous automated section after it is now incorrect. You have to work it from beginning of the song to the end of the song in order. So another setting here is preserve tempo after selection. What that means is after you make a tempo change, do you want the, uh, the rest, everything after this selected area, so all of this area here, do you want it to slave to the new tempo or do you want it to remain where it was previously? So if I take this section right here and I leave preserve tempo after selection, set it to 145 again, we can see this area at the end of here, it never changed. It stayed at 138 BPM. So, but again, as I mentioned earlier, the end start times of the grid are kind of messed up now and not perfectly on the, the beat of the audio as it was previously. Now, if we want everything after the starting point here to the end to slave to this single tempo, you would uncheck it. And then if I make that change to 145, just everything after it is now changed to 145. And for each setting here, uh, constant, linear, parabolic, and so on, the advanced setting might have uh, some subtle changes in it. It's not going to be identical for each one. The main settings here, again, is going to be the resolution and the density settings that are here. They're just in now uh, individually selected for each section you are working on. Uh, there's going to be some other little, um, if you come down here, um, linear. So at linear, we got our start and end time tempos. So for instance, uh, you can think of a linear as like a ramp. So it's going to be a perfect line, whether it's going up or down in tempo. So we could say we want to go from 138, end it at 145. And so it just creates at density and resolution. It creates that tempo change from within my selected area. And if we want to have more sample points in here, again, change our density. Let's just change it to, say, 30-second notes. Let me undo this. Hit it again. 
and we can see that's going to be a lot smoother change. I explained linear. Those are the most common two to work in is going to be constant and linear. You can experiment with parabolic changes. That's going to set here like a curve. So if, say, the tempo is going to ramp up or down, this can dictate the curve of it. So say we want to go 138. Let's say 196. We'll make it a little more drastic. So now this created our curve based on this setting. So if, say we want to make it extremely tight. We want to make that more loose. So we can control our ramp under the parabolic setting. So I think the last thing we should talk about here quickly is uh, the mode, sample or ticks mode that the data is in. So that uh, when I say data, I'm referring to either audio or MIDI data. Typically, if it's in MIDI, rule of thumb, you're probably working in ticks because you want that data to move around with the grid changes. Whereas if you're working in audio, you don't want or should I say typically would not want the audio moving around as you adjust the tempo. You want it to always stay right where it's at. So audio in most cases in this instance, let me blow this up a little bigger, is going to be set in samples. And that's what we've been working in. So as we make all these changes, the grid moves, but the data, the audio in this case, it never moves. So if we change it to ticks, for instance, and then we make a tempo change, so let me change it to say 152. Now when we change it to ticks, you see that the audio stuck with that in the time code. So wherever the start of the audio was placed, uh, whenever I move the tempo, it's going to stick there. It's not going to move. So the audio is gonna be shifted around. So typically when you're working with audio, you're not going to want this as much. This would be more of a MIDI feature. So it's kind of by default that audio tracks are going to be working at samples and uh, MIDI tracks, uh, instrument tracks, either way, are going to be working at ticks because when you make these changes, you would want your MIDI data to slave to those changes. So I hope that answers any questions you might have had. Uh, feel free to contact us with any other questions. And thank you for watching the video. Mm -hmm.